Hello, and welcome to another fun-filled Sunday. Fuck off, asshole! Leave me alone! Don't you know it's fucking Sunday? today is well first off uh we're gonna do something new we're gonna kind of build something new kind of work on a new composition i want to just kind of work on some new music new composition who knows we might work on a new theme song if we find something or or kick around an idea that we think is better than the current theme song we have you know um i've always gotten a comment that the theme song is way too short you know and that we should uh make it longer, you know, maybe something like three minutes or five minutes, you know, a 10 minute theme song. Who knows? We'll see. But anyway, what I'd like to do is uh, before we work on something new to kind of put the old thing to bed and to uh, just say that this is now at least as much as it can be or as much as I'll take it at the moment, this is a somewhat fully formed idea. So here... What we'll do is we will now uh, listen to the current composition, which uh, at the moment just has um, one set of vocals or one you know line that says, "Why do I keep doing all of this for you?" So um, you know, as we beg that question, as we uh, listen to this, uh, we'll contemplate this. Be the next thing. Who knows? Welcome to Sunday.
All right. Um, very cool. Very cool stuff. You can especially hear the uh, that last ensemble that I worked with, the rework hits. Um, <clears throat> that's a really cool thing, too. I mean, um, so everything that went into that, you can, of course, see as it transpired uh, through, I don't know, uh, episodes, um, you know, whatever it is to whatever it is. But um, I'll put the links in the description, and um, you can see how I kind of composed each part of this particular composition and as you can see it does say rough it could use a good mix um but it uh is really cool sounding i'm digging it so uh today we're going to work on something totally new what i'd like to do is i'd like to understand like wave folding and wave you know oscillator wave by that i mean oscillator wave wave folding and wave shaping and how that affects the actual, you know, sound of the wave and what we hear versus, you know, what possibly visually we might be able to represent on a scope. So um, for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a couple of oscillators, one being the toy box, just the standard free pack oscillator, badass, and then also... I'm going to pull up the dun 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 the oh no not the tape delay but the um the Euro React uh, oscillator I'm going to pull up the fold oscillator cuz there's some controls on this that can apply some wave folding and wave shaping and so what I'd like to do is kind of see how that uh controls the uh um uh, you know, controls the shape of the wave, essentially, over time. So let's bring a mixer into it as well. We'll go with the old uh, trusty toy box uh, mixer section. So we'll just uh, get these get these patched in here. I like to go with purple for the audio cables. And we have our mixer and uh, analog stereo out uh, set up to uh, purple. So uh, there we have that. And then what I'm also going to do is grab a uh, toy box VCA because it's a dual VCA. So that'll be uh, handy for what we got to do for today. Um, it will uh, allow us to go isolate both. Uh, outputs if we want to but then um, what we're gonna do is control the level of that <clears throat> from zero so we just set it to zero so I just double clicked it, it was set to a hundred and I set to zero um, but I'm gonna use a envelope to control this um, so uh, for today let's go ahead and go with the standard um, envelope follower from toy box. So a lot of these things from toy box are in the free pack. The emphasis I wanted to put on today was this fold oscillator from Euro react and how it maybe differs from, uh, a regular oscillator or this oscillator with also with warping, what might say fold or wave folding capabilities as well. So what that might do. So <clears throat> very cool stuff. Let's dig in. So um, I'm going to go ahead and patch the gate from the note in to the gate and we'll color that green and let's go ahead and get the pitch patched in as well. We'll color that red and it'll also be cool to run this with some uh, FM as well, so we'll just color that a blue. Um, but that'll be interesting as well. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, what we definitely want is uh, this envelope controlling the levels. So uh, that is going to be a, yeah, we'll set that to blue. And we'll just modulate this up a little bit for now and see if we got some all right so we have note in happening from note in response happening from the midi keyboard and then this is now modulating the level of this so now we know what we uh, whatever we put through this this ought to work so we'll go ahead and patch in these audio cables 
So we'll color it. Oh, no. That's not what we want to do. Uh, we don't want to delete it. We just want to color it purple. I recommend not clicking right there on that thing. Because if you click on that thing, actually, if you just do it really quick, let me just click on it really quick. Just like that. Then it's kind of a shortcut. It is useful if you want to use that. But you could unintentionally, uh, inadvertently, uh, delete your cable that you're wanting to work with. So if you want to just color them, maybe click just a little bit here and get better with aim. Uh, little tool tip of the day. Um, but we don't actually just want to modulate that curve. What we do want to do is modulate this guy. So both levels are being uh, sent out. So now we know... Both of those levels are coming through. Now let's see if we can hear at least the first oscillator here. We have both are set to key tracking. That's good. Um, what I want to figure out is what's going on with the VCA. This is definitely happening. Let's see. Hmm. Maybe if we just go straight in and see if it... Yeah, we definitely have sound. So it's definitely a bonehead mistake of mine. Um, something going on. Uh, so let's see if we can unpack what I'm doing here. Envelope out. Modulation A. It's definitely making that level up. So that's good. Going out from input from the oscillator out here to input 1 and input 2. That's going out one and two. And I have one and two turned down. Well, let's see if this is, let's see if this is happening. No, it's definitely something with my VCA hookup here. Something's wrong. Let's see, because we can hook this out, and that's fine, but something's wrong with my VCA situation here. Worst case, if this takes an ungodly amount of time for me to figure out, which sometimes these things do, um, we'll just edit this part out, so... No one ever sees us, but uh, it's a good thing about time is when you have it. Let's try to figure out what the deal is. So gate, gate. I mean, this is definitely working. It's modulating this, but it's like the VCA is not making any sound. Let's see.
Well, we know it's working in this mixer. I don't know what's going on with the toy box ones. Hmm. modulation source. Normally that's how I set it up, I thought. Maybe not. But interestingly enough, we have it set up now, so that's all that matters. Um, at any rate, uh, the easy thing to do is um, is to set up the envelope from Toybox, set up the dual VCA from Toybox, and then to just set up this envelope control um, into the control one. And you can use this curve, then control to kind of either lessen, it looks like, or increase the degree of uh, the particular envelope or gate uh, that's coming through. So that's kind of cool as well. That would actually be uh, <clears throat> much more useful. So if I had been using that that kind of method from the beginning. Uh, so interestingly, it's it's kind of forced my hand here, but um, I, d I don't mind at all <clears throat> kind of using this as a way of uh, hooking these in. So let's hook both of these in. And now see what the deal is for input number two. Yeah, so uh, have some, definitely have a mixture of two, uh, two signals happening. So it uh, looks like there's a sine and a tri, crossfade between sine and tri oscillators. 
for the uh, fold. So let's look up uh, the filters from Euro React. And let's use an entropy filter. Let's see this guy. 8 bit uh, probabilistic destruction with sample rate reduction and a variable SR filter. This takes ADDA conversion blocks and stuffs eight probability filters between them. Each probability feature determines the chance that each bit will be turned to zero when it it's one. What does this mean? Well, amplitude sensitive destruction, more or less. After all the bitwise probabilistic, probable, probabilistic, probabilistic, <laughs> it's a crazy word to say. Probabilistic destruction occurs. There are three output controls. These include a sample rate reducer, a low pass filter, and a dry wet control. Think of it as the world's most overcomplicated bit crusher. Yeah, it sounds like it. Encoding decoding modes, uh, Uni 8, 8 bit unassigned representation, um, BI off scales and offsets, and plus and minus uh, 1.0 signal to 0 to 1 before using a Uni 8 encoder naturally details loss, BI sig. So, different types of uh, bit reduction, it looks like, that you can have. Um, and a m number of different outputs. So gate outputs for the individual bits of the signal. Uh, main signal outputs. So main signal input. So um, let's go ahead and patch this guy in. Input number two. Let's just solo it. <laughs> Looks like we have a dry wet, which is nice. Regular cutoff knob. So that's uh, good to know. Sample rate. That's nice. So this is gonna be fun to play with. Um, Let's go with dry for now, just to kind of get um, a sense of what the oscillator is doing. Um, and then let's find a filter for a toy box. Uh, let's just go with the standard filter for now. That will work. And then we'll patch this guy into number one. And let's solo number one. All right, cool. Uh, so what I want to get a sense of is what difference these have whenever you look at these through a scope. 
So I want to pull a couple of scopes in here and um, essentially just visualize each of these oscillators. So we'll pull the uh, scope next to or kind of in front of <clears throat> each oscillator and we'll come out of the output and just into the input and see. see what, you know, the bending or warping, you know, how that affects things. So um, let's come out of the output again here and into the input of that scope. And now we can see what each Nice bass sound. So, um, That's a really nice, um, so let's, let, yeah, let's get down to the lower signs so that you can really see, so that we can really see what this looks like from a scope perspective. So, and it would probably be good. Just to put, just to say, this is, say, OS1 scope, and this is OS2 scope. And then put the, maybe the filter, like right next to, um, yeah, we'll figure out how we want to, how we want to arrange this guy to make this look a little bit easier to understand. So the filters down on this row maybe, oscillator one scope, here's the first oscillator, oscillator two scope, there's that oscillator. So maybe actually, you know, the more logical to me would be like, okay, yeah, here we go. That filter, <clears throat> and then let's maybe move the uh, envelopes and VCAs down here. That's yeah, a little bit better. Um, not bad for a three level, three level beast. Uh, but at any rate, what we want to do is kind of see, see how the uh, changes to the waveform uh, affect, um, you know, the way it sounds as well as the way it's kind of visually represented. So maybe here's a waveform that we can at least somewhat hear. Down here is, you know, we can hear it less. But right here we can pretty much hear it. So if we if we change this to a triangle, you see it starts to sharpen up. Change it to a square or a pulse, you can you can see it kind of sharpen up. Let's see what we do when it when we hit this warp. So you see how it warps the waveform and how it changes how it sounds. So there's a number of bend or warp types, which you can read about here. Bend plus or minus. So same concept, just warps it the other way, but obviously it gives you a you know, different kind of sound. And asymmetrical. And you can see, you can kind of get a preview of what it's doing here in this little bubble. But hooking it up to a scope, you can really see what it's doing. As well as here. The sync. So start off. And then it just adds like a curve to that, as you can see. Duplicates waveform a number of times, so that's cool. Hyper. 
you can kind of see what it's doing to the sound too. So I recommend if you're just listening to this <clears throat> to uh, check out the video that's on YouTube. But now if you move over to Oscillator 2 from Euro React, the fold. So you flip between sine and try, but we're not hearing any difference because this is not really turned up. So let's turn up that in the mixer. It's definitely that one. It's definitely the second one we're hearing. So obviously it's gonna sound different when we turn that on. Okay, so that's the dry signal. I guess not much of a difference from what I can hear. Yeah, that's a difference. Never mind. I don't know, I'm crazy. So there's the sign sound. That's a rich it's a rich sign sound from the fold oscillator and then you can bend it I like adding the bias adds DC offset to the wave folder input. This affects the symmetry of the output. I like it because as you can see, yeah, it either kind of tucks on top of or beneath the line of symmetry or the, you know, the starting point. So it's really nice. And then obviously I can add some FM. So that would be actually be really cool to add like an LFO that just modulates that over time. Let's see what we got. Um Let's see.
until next time.